Hi, it's John Kelly. In this module, we are going to discuss the requirements in an initial audit. And as always, we want to be efficient and effective, follow professional standards, and document what we have done properly. Now, the principle of this section is basically that if the prior auditor is qualified and if the procedures we do, which give hints about last year, don't show that there's anything wrong in last year's numbers, that we should be okay. That's roughly all we have to do is check that the prior auditor was qualified, pay attention to the procedures we do this year, and maybe take a few looks at the opening balances as needed, but not much more should be needed. So the specifics are read the prior financial statements and the audit report and see if there are any issues and normally there won't be. Check that the opening balances are carried forward okay and that's actually something you need to do in almost every audit because it's really embarrassing at the end when you suddenly notice that the client hasn't, I don't know, posted last year's journal entries correctly and the opening balance of retained earnings is not equal to the closing balance of retained earnings and we have to spend a bunch of time fixing that. It's kind of embarrassing if you haven't noticed that. So a good idea to check that in every audit. And then in an initial audit, check that they're using a proper accounting framework, that the uh, accounting framework they're using is appropriate to their circumstances. And then we're required to do one or more of the following procedures. And the first thing we could do is ask the prior auditor if we can go and look at their files, though that is often pointless, I find now, because particularly the larger firms remove many, many, many working papers from their files and don't let us look at them. And if we can't look at the whole file, it's kind of pointless to look at only part of it. So we're then normally stuck with the second procedures. Consider if this year's procedures indicate that everything's okay, and that should work. If we suddenly find a huge bad debt expense and we realize that it's for last year, well, that could indicate a mistake last year. But if we find that the bad debt expense this year is small and consistent with last year, that leads us to believe that accounts receivable was right last year. Or maybe we need to do some more work. We find that there is something wrong. But if the prior auditor was qualified, it's, that's probably unlikely. But we only have to do one of those three. And if the second one works, that's all we have to do. And of course, if we need to, we will do more work. And if the auditor last year had modified their report, there was a qualification or an adverse or a denial, we need to consider whether that carried forward or whether the problem had been resolved this year. We need to consider whether we needed to refer to that in our audit opinion this year. So if there was a modification, and that's probably unlikely, but if there was, there are a number of things we need to consider. And again, consider the consistency of accounting policies, whether they are appropriate and whether they have been applied consistently. And it's important to document what we have done, so it's useful to have a checklist that reminds us of the requirements of 510 that we're supposed to have gone through. The other thing that it would be useful to have this checklist remind you to do is there's normally an ethical requirement that you communicate with the prior auditor, and that's something that's easy to forget. So not a bad idea to have this checklist remind you to communicate with the prior auditor. So, thanks for listening.